This meeting is being recorded. Hello, everyone. I'm Zanda Hilger, and I coordinate for the Area Agency on Aging of North Central Texas, the North Texas Caregiver Teleconnection. We've been doing this in partnership with WellMed for, I think, five years. I'm not even sure how it was the first session. And it's just an opportunity to share with one another, and especially especially this one today consider this that this is an interactive we're we're talking together i was primary caregiver for my mother my husband has some um, uh, back and mobility problems but he's still pretty active but i have as time goes on i've taken up uh, taking on some responsibilities that he's no longer able to mention or to handle. And I've mentioned that simply because to say that I am a caregiver, I know what caregiving is, and hopefully I can identify with some of the issues that you have. You will be receiving some materials that will be sent from uh, WellMed Foundation. And these are materials that hopefully are helpful to you. But if you don't already have a pen and paper, I would encourage you to take that out. So you can take some notes as we go along. We will have other people joining us, but we're going to just get right in there. So if you have something to say, please unmute so we can hear it. So I always like to start this session and we try to do this once a year is, what do you look forward to during this season? Even though you are caregivers this year, there are things that we all look forward to. What do you look forward to? Anybody? Okay. Well, that's all right, too. Usually people say food. I was going to say food. food <laughs> Usually people say food. Food and, food and family. Food and, and I, family. And I love the holiday movies. And the movies. The there you go. Anybody want to add to that? I saw some smiles that came on your faces with that. Anything else that you look forward to? During the time that I was providing care, I said to say I was looking for it to be over. Over it. Okay. Now that slips yeah. into the other side of that coin, mm -hmm. which is what do you not look forward to? What do you dread? Let's be honest about that. What do you dread or not look forward to? Anybody? Well, I just, I'm kind of new to this and kind of not. Um, my dad died of dementia. And the last eight months, we couldn't take care of him anymore. And we, he was in memory care and it was mm -hmm. just awful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um now I don't have an official diagnosis yet but mm -hmm. my mom apparently has dementia her memory is terrible I've known that for a while and she just got her identity stolen she got scammed out of forty thousand oh. dollars and oh, it's not no. traceable and they say that it's up during the holidays and it's just gone and now I'm trying to figure out how to protect her from herself because she won't mm -hmm cooperate with me mm -hmm. on everything like I mm -hmm. I need her to sign over you know so that I can take care of her affairs she's already yeah. let I'm already on her checking account and already been taking care of that but um anyway I'm just having a difficult time because she refuses to live with me she wants to live by herself mm -hmm. and so I'm in the beginning stages of trying to deal with that and I don't know how I'm going to get through it mm -hmm. bless your heart and I'm sure many people listening, and I can relate to that with my mom. She's been gone for a few years now. Um, what I would recommend that you do is hopefully all of you are aware of the Area Agency on Aging. And in all communities across the United States, dialing 211 and ask for the, the Area Agency on Aging there are what are called benefits counselors and their program coordinators, and they might have some ideas for you. 
I also would encourage you, all of you really listening in through teleconnection, uh, there some of the recordings, do a search, and there are several recordings about scams, what to do about scams, how to avoid scams. Um, and I would encourage you to look at those and all of the uh, caregiver teleconnections, they bring in experts, subject matter experts, and hopefully you can find a lot of assistance with that. How do, how do you find those? Uh, go to your, when you, when you registered for this session, mm -hmm. if you will look at the URL at the end, you know, at yeah and do a do a google search for that it will tell you it will take you caregiver teleconnection and it will take you to a screen where you can search uh minerva can you give people some pointers about how how to use that little search window it's pretty self-explanatory but you might have some I some ideas actually I was actually putting on the chat what Excellent. our website is. Mm -hmm. All of the sessions can be found under the health and wellness section. But if you know a specific presenter or a specific topic you're interested in, you can either find it through the search engine. If you want to listen to all the ones from Sanda, just type in Sanda under the search and it'll pop all of them up. And this is from several years that we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A couple of months ago, since I work closely with the Area Agency on Aging, every year we have at least one or two sessions about uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and a, a colleague at the Area Agency on Aging in North Central Texas, she is, one of her passions is about scams. There is a lot of information out right now that the federal government and then Melinda has uh, done one recently about scamming. It's a tough one, especially when the person doesn't live with you. And Minerva has put a uh, connect, uh, uh, a link for you. If you have any trouble bringing those up, uh, just send an, a, a text or, or not a text, but an email to uh, well met and they can help with that and also the area agency on aging they are the federally funded program that provides services for people age 60 and older and their caregivers and there are certain mandated programs including that they have they all have including uh, what are called benefits counselors and they are experts in in medicare and because uh, medicare social security all of the benefits and because scamming has become such an issue, uh, most of them know a lot about that too. So excellent question. All right, let's skip into what are your, any of you, what are your specific, um, what do you challenge, what do you face with this year? What's a challenge that you have that we could help you with? All right. I I'm will going bring... back to. Go ahead. I'm in college. I'm going back uh -huh. to school. So oh my goodness. That, yes. And this is like like the young lady said before me. I'm new to this, also to this area. So mm -hmm. um, in this area here, care, caregiver. So mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a lot for me caregiving and then doing school because right now I'm doing I'm going through testing I'm doing the finals gracious me now a question do you have um has your loved one been thoroughly evaluated medically by internal medicine or a neurologist do they have any dementia or Alzheimer's what is that person's situation medically Meaning, um, have they have they had a full medical and psychological neurological eval? Yes, but only a touch of it, because mm -hmm. you know losing keys and things mm -hmm. like you know small things. So that's okay. what I go through. Okay, I think everybody listening in will say um, you're 
very often the people that we care for don't listen to us <laughs> necessarily, <laughs> but it all starts with a thorough evaluation, medical evaluation. And if you see some signs of dementia, then that might involve what's called a neuropsychological. Um, usually uh, the best um, physicians for someone who's older is someone that majors, that has a, mass, uh, a specialty in internal medicine, but companies like WellMed, not companies, services like WellMed, these are people who have specific knowledge and training in uh, elder care because medicine treating an older adult is very different than treating somebody new or somebody younger. What very often is a, a problem for many caregivers is that their loved one wants to continue to go to Dr. Smith that they've gone to for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And some of you please jump in on this, but some of the ways to, uh, to deal with that is mom, dad, who, who in your case, is it a mother, a dad, who is your, the person you're caring for? Is it a dad, mom, aunt, uncle? Who are you caring for? Grandmother. Grandmother. Okay. Um, grandmother, I am so concerned. I want to make sure you get the best possible health care. And I am concerned and I've learned about specialties, you know, just as we take, we took Johnny to a pediatrician when he was sick, when he was a kid, um, you, you, you have special needs in terms of you may not process the same thing. You know, you and I have talked about, hey, it's harder for us to manage our weight or whatever. So I have found a specialist and I want to be able to take you to that. That sometimes is a way that they get involved because they want to please you. <laughs> Some of them, they're just waiting to be asked. Okay, so I see that Gina is shaking her head. So okay. how are you going to get her to, how, how are you going to get this to, how are you going to get the care? I don't know, because she, she's willing to go into her primary care physician mm -hmm. because she's having mm -hmm. some problems. And she goes to a heart failure specialist because she mm -hmm. has heart failure. But she won't go to the neurologist because my dad had dementia and mm -hmm. she knows every she knows going to the neurologist might mean and mm -hmm. i've tried to get i tried mm -hmm. to get them to early diagnose it a long time ago mm -hmm. and one doctor told he did she can't have a ct i mean an mri because she has a pacemaker mm -hmm. they did a a CT scan of her brain and said she had normal brain shrinkage for her age but that was mm -hmm. many years ago mm -hmm. And another neurologist said she had the beginnings of dementia, but that guy's in jail, so I don't know. I think he, he was scared. <laughs> well, he was scared, you, you scared do what of you Medicare. Can do. You can do what you can do. Just make sure there's a thorough medical evaluation that's happened not a year ago, especially if things have changed, because things can change. Well, and again, you kind of get creative about how to do that. And one of the, the tricks that I use, and that sounds awful to say tricks, one of the techniques I used, my mother started forbidding me to go into the examination room with her. Oh my she God. said I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I would do is I would make bullet points. I talked to my brother and sister-in-law who weren't as involved. And I would give a snapshot. This is what we're seeing. These are our concerns. And in my case, I was faxing it over at the time there was faxing, but you can send it through the portal or whatever. And I actually had that physician come out to see me. And she said, her first question is, what is she doing here today? Because my mother was a doctor shopper, but she said, what she wrote me was very helpful because what it did is it gave me something to check on. 
you know, sometimes they're accurate, sometimes you're, um, but think in terms of what kind of information you can get to the physician beforehand. Uh, and be very careful, all of you saying, mom, dad, whoever, you need to, you need to see a specialist. Because how many of you like to be told you need to <laughs> by your children? No. <laughs> so think in terms, think in terms of I want you to have the best health care. I've learned of this physician. Uh, let's make sure that everything, and as you very well know, many, um, many, especially older, older women, they have uh, recurrent urinary tract infections and their behaviors can mimic that. Has somebody raised mm -hmm. their hand for a question? Not a question, um, okay. more so to, to, to agree with you with the, and, I, I, and you're saying the word trick, but I started using the word um, caregivers manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a more malevolent, uh, um, benevolent well, term, but yeah. Well, I, I tell you that that was once I was told never to to do not reason with my mother. Right. Somehow that clicked in my right. head. And after I was told that information, of course, I fell off the hill several times. Uh -huh. But oh, once I, what, what was the information that you were told? Do not reason. Do not reason. Oh, okay. With the Don't try to reason with them. Yeah. Right. If, if they say way. that the mm -hmm. sun is shining and right. they went to the market yesterday, they went to the market yesterday. Mm -hmm. You right. just go from there and right. try to figure out. And and I did use those things, you know, for mm -hmm. the by slipping a note to the banker once mm -hmm. she realized who I was. Once mm -hmm. you realize that mm -hmm. you're not taking from the person, mm -hmm. you're not, you know, doing something to harm them, everything that you're doing, you're providing care. Right. It's, it's an unorthodox right. way to do right. it. Because if as long as the person can say, no, I don't want this service, there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. Thank you for saying that. That's exactly right. I think, Gina, you made the comment and someone else did too, uh, Lynette maybe, is that, let's face it, caregiving doesn't come with policies and procedures or a training manual. There are many, many, many rich resources out there. Uh, one of the ones that I would refer you to, WellMed has many resources. They have blogs. I want to refer you to the website that we manage, and it's through two area agencies on aging. It was actually written with funds for three of them. It's called FamilyCaregiversOnline.net, and we have frequently asked questions, um, education modules, blogs on particular topics. We have a resource directory, and what we've tried to do is pull all of this information together into one place, a jumping off point. Does it have everything you need? No, but it might be a good place to start. But let me encourage all of you, educate, 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 educate. Can't, um, cannot say that enough. And if you're not already involved in some kind of a support group, it is, we highly recommend that because that's also education. The beauty of all of these technologies is some of you may not be able to leave, leave the house or you work and you just can't physically go, but many, many support groups are now online. Uh, the Alzheimer's Association has uh, a list of uh, throughout the country and there it's an interesting, they've kind of switched something. It's called Community Resource Finder community resource finder, but just plug in Alzheimer's Association and your zip code, and it will probably take you to some of those, some of those events. But uh, on our website, we have uh, one page designated to support groups, 
And we've tried to make it as easy as possible to get to Alzheimer's Association support groups and then some of the, uh, the local ones. So, um, and I guess the term is, especially in terms of the, the internet, work smarter, not harder on the internet. Uh, and if you've not already noticed this on the internet, the first thing that pops up generally is going to be ads. Be very careful about that because they may have some really good information in terms of blogs for these facilities, but be cautious because it might pull you in to something, you know, you reach out and all of a sudden you're involved and they want you to come look at facilities. We, um, ours is funded by you, the American tax, uh, taxpayer. And you can send us an email if you get lost. And also remember the Area Agency on Aging, that's that 211 call. Uh, those, how many of you are in the San Antonio area? Not many, because I was going to recommend you've got WellMed's a good resource. Every community in the United States has an area agency on aging. It is funded by the federal government. Okay, so let's switch specifically to the holidays. All right, what do you... What do you know you're going to be facing that you might could use some uh, that you either need to vent about or you might could use a little bit of assistance with from from some of us today? Just jump right in. You don't have to raise your hand. Anybody? Well, um, like I said, what the stuff just recently happened with my mom and my brothers. I have two older brothers and they're not helping at all. Imagine. Can I interrupt one moment to say this? In general, caregiving is provided by one person, no matter how many. Now, sometimes they're the coach or the lead person, but it is not at all unusual that you're it. So please go on. I hope that didn't get you off track. No, I just, um, I have health problems myself. I'm on disability. Mm -hmm. And I've been going, driving back and forth over there because, she, you know, she's not willing to move. Mm -hmm. And how uh, far is she away from you? Oh, five and a half miles. Okay. And so I'm exhausted. Ever since this happened, I'm over there all the time and I'm exhausted. And my health problems are aggravating. I'm just, because mm -hmm. of this identity theft and losing so much money, I'm just mm -hmm. like, that was money that I was planning on getting help to take mm -hmm. care of her. And now, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go to the bank and take out the last $23,000 she had. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was on the count so I could do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, it's just, it's frustrating that everybody, that everybody's decided that it's my responsibility. And I understand why, because I'm the only one, well, I shouldn't say, I'm on disability, so I'm at home, but my brother mm -hmm. works for himself, so he's at home. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I have a lot of problems with depression and anxiety, and this has sent me, mm -hmm. I feel like I can't cope. Sure. And that's another good, that's another good reason for a support group. Are you under the care of a physician? Yeah, a lot okay. of them. <laughs> and okay. And are you taking any medication for your depression? Yes. I'm taking right. two medications for depression. And Does I'm that help? Mm. Then if it's not helping as much ah. as you would like, then call the doctor. You may need a different type or you may need a different dose. Okay. Well, I've, been, I've been through all that and I'm so sensitive to medicines, but that's a off topic. Right. But that's another issue. Okay. Have, and I would encourage this of all of you, have you made a list of what areas that you need help with and think in terms of lists that family could provide or friends could provide or churches could provide or 
there may be a separate list that none of them could, but maybe it's financial or whatever. If you've not done so, make a list. And if you, um, because that would be helpful too. Many of the things that in my case, many of the responsibilities I had with my mother, I needed to handle them. I needed to take care of them because I was kind of the overall coach. My sister-in-law was wonderful. Uh, however, my brother at the time, he had health problems and he was very busy. Everybody, and that's busy. what you're going to hear from family members. I'm busy. Well, I honestly don't know many people who aren't busy. And when you start thinking about that list, who of your family could have maybe has a skill set for that? That and when they say you're busy, here's a good way to respond. I know. It's just amazing, isn't it? I'm just, I'm busy too. I really need help with. And negotiate. One phrase I would encourage you to drop out of your communication is you need to. <laughs> yeah. Just write it down and draw a circle and a big bar between it. Again, no one likes to be told what to do, including my you know, the person you're caring for, you need to take this blue pill again. Um, nobody likes to be told what to do, but if you provide it, or even in, in these things that you need help with, I understand you're very busy. Here's what we've got going on. However, mom is now taking this medication and she has to have blood draws. And it would be very helpful for us if you could take her and get that blood draw, it's about a 10 minute drive, um, that would help us a great deal because it has to be done. And you present it to them, not because it makes it convenient for you, it's all about their care. It's not personal. And their reaction to you is not personal. I know it feels like it sometimes, but it's about them. Remember that when they're responding or reacting in some case, it's about them. Could you maybe try that? Have a list, think in terms of what their skill sets might be. And in some case, don't take no for an answer. It may not be the right timing. You may have to approach it another few days or a week, but make it clear that this is something you have to have help with. You can't handle it all. Well, I told um, my, one of my brothers, the one, one of them is just totally irresponsible. So he's kind of out mm -hmm. and the other one is married. I told him that I needed his help, that I couldn't do all this by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, and this was right after the identity theft happened. He said, well, what do you want me to do? And that was it. And we don't, we, I don't have a good relationship with either one of my brothers. And okay. so they're not well, going to help me. <laughs> okay. Again, think in terms of what needs to be done, even if it's phone calls or doing research, anything that would help relieve some of that on you. How about the, the, uh, the rest of you? What are your challenges, especially now at this time of the year? What are you struggling with or what advice do you have for the rest of us? I found that it was it was sometimes better that maybe you reached outside of your your family, your immediate mm -hmm. circle. If they're not in your on your team, then you have to create a new team. Mm -hmm. You have to create professional mm -hmm. team members to help you or like like um Zanna was saying about church your mm -hmm. church members or your your you know best friends that right. you can trust to help you and just omit those people that's not helping you because right. just keep what you're saying it over and over doesn't make it you know there's nothing right. we can say to you because right. I don't know Johnny or Billy to, mm -hmm. to go and beat them up 
and tell them to uh, <laughs> come over there and help you. <laughs> right. And darling, so I completely agree. Serious. I completely agree. But I don't think it ever is a time when we let our family off the hook. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we I know. Asking. To, yeah. Not you, and I, was, I wasn't. I was, what I was saying is basically to add to what you were saying yes. is you, like she was trying to tell you to find little windows that right. can, that will help right. you that they, mm-hmm. they don't know that they're helping you but they really are they so really are exactly as well as all the other people around mm-hmm. <laughs> well and the phrase it takes a village it does. and for many for many of our communities now the folks that are help are going to be the most helpful aren't blood relatives they may be friends they may be people from Another idea might be making a list of people that are not necessarily going to take a real active role in the caregiving. And what I mean by that is I was working with a client. We had a program here. We were going into their homes and he was taking care of his wife and he was completely isolated. And so we started just brainstorming. He was retired and um. I talked about, is there anybody that he used to work with that he kind of misses? And so he agreed to reach out to him. And you don't necessarily start dumping on those people, but you could say, I haven't heard from you for a long time. I'd love to have coffee if you want to come over here or we could meet somewhere. And you just kind of slowly because very often, how many of you find this true too? The last thing sometimes I wanted to talk about was my caregiving. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go out and have lunch and find out what else was going on in the world. So it may be that you need to talk about that. That's the beauty of a support group. More and more caregivers are taking advantage of counseling And there are more and more counselors who have some experience, either their personal experience or their training of working with older adults or even caregivers. So the whole idea is you don't have to keep it inside. How about the rest of you? Do you have any other ideas, especially when you're feeling these like, oh, oh, church. Let me pause about that. You yourself or your the person you're caring for may no longer be involved in a big church, but think in terms of the largest church in your community. Very often they will have support groups. Many of those are still online or they will have something called Stephen Ministries. Stephen Ministries are non-denominational. They do not charge and their job is to go into the homes and provide spiritual support, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. And I can tell you that uh, unless they have changed that policy, they do not list online. They just don't. These people are highly trained. They're all volunteers. Usually it's a larger church, if, if, uh, but not necessarily. And sometimes the church secretary might be aware, maybe We don't have it here, but we know that such and such church does. But that's another way. They're not going to help with the active caregiving, but they're going to help with the psychological and the emotional part of caregiving and the spiritual part of caregiving. Because I've heard many people say, I can handle the bathing and the dressing. It's that emotional and psychological challenges of supporting my parent or support or, or for myself that sometimes can be even more of a challenge. Okay, how about the rest of you? Do you have anything to add to this conversation or you need our assistance with problem solving? Something I'd like to add. Um, I found that I have three sisters, but you're right. One person is really the caregiver. Um, But what I've done is I've discovered through the process, what their niche is, what are they good at? Yes, good point. Things that I can turn over, Mm -hmm. and I've heard more than once from more than one of them, you have to ask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
then I'm trying to be very careful when I ask that this is their mother. Mm -hmm. This is not just my mother mm -hmm. and it's not just me, mm -hmm. but this is your mother. This time is precious. If you right. miss out on it, then you've missed out on it forever. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent point. And that's where that list comes into hand of all of the, the things that your mother, your parent, whoever needs and mixing their skill sets you know, maybe one of them is really good with the financial part. Maybe they could pay the bills or they could do something, create a spreadsheet, do something, but think in terms of their skill set. And sometimes even the gentleman that I talked about, his friend, what the first step for them was that he reached out and started talking to his friend, even a phone call can make a tremendous difference. It may not be enough, but it's a start. It is a start of doing something that can help you so you're not shouldering all of it. Good point, really good point. What about the rest of you? What challenge do you have or what do you recommend? My, okay. my, cha my challenge is mm -hmm. I'm, I have no siblings mm -hmm. and my uncle that's left because she had out of all the kids, everybody mm -hmm. is deceased and my uncle is, he's dealing with his own illnesses that he has a uh, stomach cancer and he doesn't live here and mm -hmm. in, in, I'm, in, I'm from Miami and um, so I'm all alone in this fight by myself. Mm -hmm. Again, the, the need of a support group, number one, and you probably have friends. You probably have people that you're close to. They may not know what to say. They may not know what to do to help you. And you can take the initiative. They very often don't know what to do, so they may avoid you. This happens frequently with caregivers. They start feeling more isolated. And it's not because their friends don't care. It's either one of two things happens. They don't know what to say, or that's all you talk about. And honestly, they get tired of it. So be very specific when you reach out, reach out to some of those people and say, you know, I just want to sit and find out what's going on, maybe take a walk. If you want to know about my mom, dad, whoever, I'll be glad to give you a short story, but I just miss you. That's a good help for you. And then that might evolve into something else. Who knows? You don't know what might happen out of that. But frequently, um, our friends, they just don't know what to do. Um, I want to share with you an anecdote that I think most caregivers, well, anecdote, it really happened. I was doing some um, presentations about general caregiving in South Dallas at several churches and there were several and it had kind of evolved into a support group even by the time I was um, coming and doing presentations and I remember we were talking about this topic and it was like early November I want to say it's years ago so some of the the uh, details have escaped me but it always stuck with me this woman said and she was probably in her 70s would be my guess her husband had Alzheimer's disease. She was taking care of him at home. And she said, I am just so worried about what to do this year. We've always hosted Christmas at our house. I've always taken care of everything. Um, some of them will bring napkins or whatever, and they'll help that day to set the table. But I just can't do it all. And so threw it up, up to the group for discussion. And her point was, I want to do it. I just don't know how I'm going to handle it. So we threw it up to the group. And what the group encouraged her to do, how many of you agree that frequently you are the problem solver in the family and you're used to taking the lead and you take care of things and you don't ask for help? Come on, ladies. 
right? It's a skill we learn over time. And sure enough, she hadn't asked anybody for help because that was her job. She considered that her job. So the ladies at that group suggested, they just did some problem solving and, and kind of brainstorming. And so she was kind of, you know, she wanted to know if that was going to work out or not. Well, the next session we had was in January. And she said, I can't wait to tell you. I, I got to tell you. I mean, she was just, we were doing like check-ins and, you know, new people, whatever. And she said, without a doubt, this Christmas was the best any of us had ever had. She said, I sent email and I called some of the kids and I told them the dilemma. And she said, with a couple of them, I cried. And I want to have it at our house, but I'm just feeling overwhelmed about this. She said not only did she end up, the only thing she did was the main course. And this is just an example. I realize you may not have big families, but how we have to ask, we have to be vulnerable. And she said the kids actually took over. One, a couple of them came over, cleaned the house the day before. Um, they split up who was going to bring what. And, you know, those people in the family that the only thing they man manage are paper plates and napkins. You have a few of those in your house, in your community. That can happen sometimes, too. Anyway, they split it up. Nobody said no. And again, I realize that may be ideal, but she said we were sitting there over dessert and one of them said, this is the best holiday I can ever remember. So part of this as caregiver, my point is we need to step back. How can we do things differently and how can we ask for help? But you've got to be specific. Um, I know many times a caregiver will think, why can't they see I need help, right? Why can't they see this? Well, number one, they don't look. Or you're always the one that took care of things, so they just assume you're going to take care of this too. Or maybe we should examine ourselves. Are we always demanding are we perfectionists? And if it's not done our way, we don't want it done at all. Sometimes it's, we have to step back and look at what we're doing to contribute to this. But look at that list that you have developed that you need help with. Realize our family is extremely small, very small. So it was me. I have a niece and I could ask for her to do certain things, but she didn't have a great relationship with her, her grandmother. My brother was of the generation, not his job, man. He didn't like hospitals. How many of you like going to hospitals? I always thought that was interesting. Nobody likes to do that. Anyway, but he was a good guy. And one of the things I did with him is I sat down and said, I need help if you could just take her to the doctor. But start thinking in terms of what can I let go of? Is it possible? What can I let go of? And in the case of the woman I'm talking about, she had to let go of, she had always prepared these special meals, you know, or a special side dish. And so what they found is one of the other family members was going to start doing that. What happened after that year? I don't know. They may have gone back to the same thing, but at least that year, she felt that there was some hope and that she felt that she wasn't carrying this and that nobody really understood her. All right, so how about the rest of you? What would you, if there was someone in our group today and they hadn't said a whole lot, but we're coming on down to the end and we kind of wanted them to get involved in this, and maybe she does have, or he does have a lot of questions. What would you say to a caregiver that this is their first holiday season, that they have primary care and they're lost? One at a time from all of you, if you, if you want to, what one thing would you suggest to him or her? And it could be something we've already talked about. 
Who wants to start? Lynette, could you start? What one thing? Are you speaking? I can't hear you. Can you hear Lynette? Okay, ask to unmute. Here we go. Here we go. All right, any of you go ahead and start talking because I'm looking at Brenda, is there anything you could say? Well, I don't know how you do it, but it's letting go of expectation. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Lower your expectations, right? How have you been able to do that? Is there any trick that you've learned that would help be helpful to us? Well, it's... it's it's hard for me. Go. I'm sorry, Brenda. I, Lynette. Go ahead, Lynette. Yeah, it's hard because of something that you are you the only one. I don't know about the rest of mm -hmm. everyone that's on online, mm -hmm. but uh, because I don't want to fail and I don't want to some something that has been getting done through me not mm -hmm. get done at all. Mm -hmm. That's my problem depending on someone else, can somebody fulfill that? Okay, Lynette, and jump in if you agree, you are gonna fail. There are gonna be things you can't do. And many caregivers are perfectionists. We expect so much more out of ourselves than we expect of anybody else. You agree? Everybody agree with that? We expect more. Yeah. And what I was gonna also say to Lynette, many caregivers feel like they're the only child. That was me. They feel like they're the only child. And so for you, maybe there's a friend, maybe there's somebody they used to work with. Again, I repeat again, the idea of a, of a, of a um, support group. Is there enough money in your their account to maybe also talk to a geriatric care manager that could provide some advice no everything is coming out of my account okay all right look around for make use of your and this is for all of you make use of your insurance your health insurance and get some counseling more and more there are people who specialize in elder care or caregiving um the comment that brenda made about lower your expectations absolutely um, the less that you expect, then you're only surprised, right? Right, Brenda? Right. If you lower your expectations, right. you at least can be surprised. Can you think, mm -hmm. and, and I know this is more on you, but just sit down and start thinking of somebody, anybody, like the gentleman I referred uh, to that he got in the habit of every week, he would talk to the guy he used to work with. And the last I heard, they even were going to go to co for coffee. And I don't remember what else happened. And I'd like to use, remind everyone, we're not Wonder Women. We're not yes. Superman or Supergirl. <laughs> yes. We are just human. And we need to also remember to take care of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, um, and some of you may already have, have seen before um, the image that's usually used a lot with caregiving. When you get on the plane and the announcement is, if the cabin loses pressure, the face mask will drop down and who do you put it on? You put it on yourself first. Because if you're reaching over and trying to put it on them, you're sucking for air. And it's very hard for many of us to do that, but absolutely self-care has to be important. It has to be. It is not selfish. Um, and I can tell you related to that, 
research has shown over and over, the number one emotion for caregivers is guilt. Could have done more, should have done it differently. What, a, you know, guilt. Just realize this is a companion that you're going to have as long as you are. And some of us are better at guilt than others. You know, some of us have had a lifelong history of dealing with guilt. It's never enough. Um, and remember, many of us think of it this way. If, a, if your best friend was telling you your story, you following me so far? What would you tell them? Would you maybe tell them, you know, but what are you doing for you? Think in those terms. Isn't it time to treat ourselves like our own best friend? And then I have more to give to others. Darlene, how about you? What, what would you tell someone else in your shoes? One thing I would tell them to take each moment and day, take it, you know, and mm -hmm. analyze yourself in that day. And most of all, take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, take care of yourself because if you're not there to care for the person you're caring for, what is to happen to that person if you're no longer? Absolutely. Then what happens? That's an excellent point. Then what happens? If it happens to you, then what happens? Right. I have a, I have a situation, I have a friend in New Jersey and her sister, well, my friend in New Jersey fell, broke an ankle, had to be in the hospital for some surgery and then rehab. Her sister had to go into rehab herself because there was no team. You know, they say about kids, it takes a village. We're not very good about elder care, about creating a village. But get creative, think outside the box. Who in your, in your world? Uh, Stephen Ministries is another resource. They're not gonna help you with your caregiving, but Stephen Ministry are non-denomination people that will help uh, that will come and provide some emotional and spiritual support for you, for the person you care for. Uh, again, I'm going to repeat it again, the importance of a support group, because they, as we have tried to do today, to talk about what they've learned, how they can, how they can help you, and how you can help them, just doing things differently. It's a little after the hour. So I wanna ask all of you again, just kind of as a review and maybe it'll help you to remember, what one thing are you taking away today that you're gonna to try to, you're gonna try or you're gonna do differently? Who wants to start? I'll, well, I'll, say, I'll say lower my expectation. Okay. You know? And, and not feel guilty of not being there, you know, not feel, feel guilty of letting someone else step in. Right, right. Okay, who else? I'm still trying to learn. Oops. I'm sorry. I'm still working on letting go of expectations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Good luck with that. We we wish you well with that. Thank you, Brenda. Darlene? That I want to continue to research and learn more about different kinds of support groups mm -hmm. and not be limited to the ones I already know mm -hmm. that there's others available mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. And remember to make use of the 211. There's also something called Elder Care Locator that is good with resources, but tap into your community. I tell people, your taxpayers and your uh, your tax taxes and your donations have paid for these services. They're not charity. 
it's time for a return on your investment. Reach out and some ideas. Remember, make a list of what you need help with. Some of that list is yours. You're not giving them up. Some of those lists, going back to what Brenda said, maybe somebody else could help you with, but it may not be according to your expectations how they do it. And sometimes that's a, that's not the way I would have done it. But it at least takes it off your shoulders, unless, of course, it means you have to go back and redo it all. But be willing to step outside the box. Give yourself the gift this year of making yourself a priority. When I used to do workshops, and so you might even think about this, I always took a box of holiday cards. And at the beginning, everybody got a holiday card. And my instructions were, as we go through this program today, write down things you want to remember. And at the end, I said, okay, now take the envelope and address it to yourself. And about a week before Christmas, I'm going to put that in the mail. And my contribution is I'll put the stamp on and I'll put them in the mail so that it's fresh. So when you get it, you go, oh yeah, we did talk about that. And I cannot tell you how often it would happen, especially when I was doing support groups or a series of programs, people would go, you have no idea how timely that was. It came in the mail just when I needed it. One gal, I remember one year, she said, well, it came in the mail, but my husband was very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? This is written in your, you know, what is this about? But write yourself a Christmas card or a note. Do something as a reminder. Make sense? All right. To all of you, I wish you well. Minerva, I wish you well. All of you have a blessed holiday season, whatever it is. Um, think expectations, think managing what you can manage, um, be kind to yourself. You wouldn't expect of a friend what you're probably expecting of yourself, right? Just be kind. It's, it's, a, it's a time of kindness. So be kind to yourself. And remember the holiday music, turn that on. However, whether it's soaring Messiah music or, um, the fun ones, watch some fun movies. Somebody said something about that. Just make the best of it. All right, take care of yourselves. Thank you, everyone. And share this with others that you know that might be in this, walking in these shoes too. Bye now, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you, Minerva.